About 16 years ago, I was at a family reunion when my grandmother pulled me aside. And I don't remember who she was talking to, but she said this, talking about me, is my preacher. And I, I remember smiling, and then I remember going to the back of the property we were on, behind a shed, and participating in a wrestling tournament with all of the kids at the reunion, and none of us were supposed to be doing that. So as you can see, at eight years old, my vision for my life and my grandmother's, not quite the same. Fast forward eight years later, and I'm involved in FCA in my youth group and some ministries in my community, and then all of a sudden this call starts being pretty apparent in my life that God, God's calling me into ministry. It took me eight years, but I finally caught the vision that my grandmother had for my life. Once I accepted my call to ministry, my grandmother on my other side, uh, my dad's mom, started saving the faith section of the Lexington Herald Leader. And every time we would go visit, she would have these grocery sacks full of these papers for me to read. All along the way, my mom was a guiding force in my life. Someone who saw me in my less than preacher quality moments and yet showed me grace, who believed in me and who prayed for me, the entire way through. And then there was this girl, <laughs> this girl that I met who I started dating and got engaged to and have been married for, married with for 11 years, married to for 11 years. She, Lindsay, has guided me. She has made me a better person. And, and she signed on knowing that she'd have to be a preacher's wife. And, and she's made every church we've been to better. There are countless women who have invested in my ministry and in my life and who I'm thankful for. And today on Mother's Day, we recognize people like that, women like that in our lives, whether they're biologically related to us or just simply somebody who gave us emotional or spiritual or, or physical uh, help throughout our lives. They, they are people who have made us better at being who we need to be. Today is a good day for us to start this series that we're calling Message in a Bottle. Over the next three weeks, we are going to be talking to three specific groups of people and delivering a message from Scripture to them and their lives. And so today, we're going to speak to women. Next week, for Graduate Sunday, we're going to speak to our youth. And then the Sunday after that, we're going to speak to men. Here's a couple things I want to get out in the open before we dive in. The first is this. Just because this is the message that I give to this group of people doesn't necessarily elevate it above any other message that the Bible gives. There's a part in, in the New Testament where a writer, Paul, says that in Christ we are, are no longer uh, slaves or free, Jews or Gentiles. We are, Jews or, we are uh, no longer male or female. In other words, in Christ we're all equal. And that means that the things that we see about Christian character, that, that applies to everybody. So go into all the world and make disciples. That's everybody. Be quick to listen, slow to speak, slow to become angry. That's everybody. You are therefore Christ ambassadors. That, that's everybody. You see, we all have these in common. But there are times in, in the Bible where specific groups of people are singled out to give extra um, instructions. So sometimes, over the next three weeks, that's what we'll be talking about. Sometimes it's, it's still something that applies to all of us. We're just going to address a certain group of people about it. The second thing I want to say is just because I may be speaking to a group that you're not in doesn't mean that you shouldn't listen. Here's the thing. Um, we, we're in this together. This thing called church is not a building, and it's not something that we go to. It's, it's something that we are. And so in order to help each other out, we need to know the path that each one of us should be on, not so that we can be legalistic, but so that we can help guide them down the path to, to reach what God's trying to, to do in their life, for them to, to do God's will, for them to grow in their faith. And so if I completely close myself off because the preacher's not talking to me today, then I, I'm actually doing a disservice to the people in my life that I can help. And so today... As we talk to women and men, children, I, I, I encourage you to listen. 
so that you can help the women in your life be who God's calling them to be, to help them along in their journey. And so today, our message in the bottle goes to women here on Mother's Day. If you take your Bible and you open it up halfway, you'll either end up in probably Psalms, Isaiah, or Proverbs. Proverbs 31 is where we, we're going to be today. Proverbs is uh, written by a man named Solomon. He's the king of Israel. He's the son of somebody that, that I'm sure that you know, David, the one who killed Goliath, the one who went on to be king. Uh, he's, he's David's son, and when he ascended to the throne, God gave him, uh, he says, so listen, I'll give you whatever you, you want. And, and Solomon asked for wisdom, and God gave him wisdom. Solomon was the wisest man who ever lived. And, and he was so wise that, that, that people would bring before him different scenarios, different issues they were dealing with, and he would wisely judge them. Uh, Proverbs is a... It's a, a letter, really. It's a letter to his son, Rehoboam. It's a letter saying, here are some wise sayings on how to live your life. And so for 31 chapters, he writes, and there's some other authors too, but, but it's a letter to his son on how to live life. The very last chapter in Proverbs, Proverbs 31, has a section in it that is uh, a, a section to... Um, to a, a wife of noble character. It's a profile of what a wife of noble character looks like. And we don't have time to read all of it here today, but we do have time to read some of it. And, and even though um, this applies or this says it's to a wife of noble character, it, there are certain aspects that maybe are just for mothers, maybe just for wives, but, but the underlying theme and the underlying message is for all women. And so instead of me reading it, I thought it would be cool today if we had a little bit of help. Wisely, she teaches faithfully. She watches over family and matters. She's busy all the time. Her children are raised and call her blessed. And her husband also. He is praised her. Many women do noble things, but you surpass them all. Charm is dissipative, and beauty is fleeting, but a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Honor her for all her hands have done, and let her works bring her praise at the city gates. Hey, thanks for your help, kids. So, what's a woman to be? Well, throughout Proverbs 31, here's a list that one of the commentators gives. She used to be loving, faithful, careful, hardworking, prudent, strong, and diligent. She's generous, prepared, extravagant, dignified, good-humored. She is wise, and she is watchful. And you thought you had a lot of stuff already to do. The truth is, that's a lot of characteristics. That's a lot of things to, to work on. And I just want to try to help you today. I want to help you because I think there's one verse that was read, that Patterson read, that, that I think helps out with the rest. Proverbs 31, verse 30. Charm is deceptive and beauty is fleeting, but a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. And that's the message in the bottle for today. That's the message in the bottle. I think as a church, I think as a community, and I think as a world, we are in desperate need of, of women who fear the Lord. We are in desperate need of women whose faith is real, it is tangible, and it makes an impact everywhere that they go. Fear of the Lord is this righteous reverence. In, in other words, it's our, our actions, our deeds, our thoughts being run through a filter of meeting God's approval. But I want to make a quick point about this. Doing these actions and saying these words and thinking these thoughts, they don't earn us salvation, nor do they earn us God's love. 
by the way, this section is for both of us, for all groups of people. Here's the thing. You were created in the image of a loving Father. He created you. He crafted you with your unique abilities and your passions. And He stayed invested in you. And He was not deterred when sin broke the relationship that you had with Him. He did not settle for your relationship being broken and for you being distant. Instead, He sent His perfect Son to die to restore that relationship that you were designed to have, the relationship that God desperately wants to have with you. And so I want you to understand that every day, every day, you are someone who is worth creating and someone worth dying for. That goes for every single one of us. But especially women, I want you to hear that every day you are, you are somebody who was worth creating and who was worth dying for by the God of the universe. And here's the thing, because we are in Christ, we are involved in a perfect love that drives away fear. Therefore, uh, fearing God is, is not working to earn, God, earn God's love. It's living because we have already received it. Here, we need women and all people, but, but we need women who are so motivated by the amazing love of the Father that they radically live for Him in their homes and in their communities and in their workplaces and in their world. How do we do, how, how do women do all of this, this, how do they fit this profile we see in Proverbs 31? Well, it's, how, how, do you, how are you loving and, and faithful and careful and hardworking? You just start by fearing the Lord. You need to understand here this morning, you are, are living to meet the approval of an audience of one. Remember back to the, to the verse that was read, charm is deceptive, beauty is fleeting. Your, your charm is going to be attractive until somebody's attention span ends. Your beauty is going to be defined by a, a certain point in your life. Your, your Instagram followers are probably going to move on to something else at some point, but, but God, God stays. He created you and He knit you together. He's the one whom all of us should be living for. And the fear of the Lord helps you accomplish everything else because it's, it's where wisdom starts. Proverbs 15, 33, it says, Wisdom, Wisdom's instruction is to fear the Lord. Solomon, in one of the very first items that he tells his son, in Proverbs 1, verse 7, says, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. He says the fear of the Lord is, is, is how we attain wisdom. It's how we, we, we learn how this world is supposed to work. But, but those who are fools, they, they despise wisdom. They despise instruction. They try to do everything on their own. And so I want to challenge you here this morning. To, to all the women who are watching this, no matter how old you are, no matter what life stage you're in, no matter your, your marital status or whatever it may be, throw out the world's standards. Quit thinking that you have to do what a society, a boyfriend, somebody else's Facebook feed, or some other social structure tells you that you have to do to attain notoriety and acceptance. Just look at God. Look at the one who tells you that you were worth creating and that you were worth dying for. Then live for Him. As I encourage you with these words, I also want to make a point about the reality of doing this. When you choose to live for God, when you choose to be a woman that fears the Lord, you can expect some pushback. Because this world doesn't fear the Lord, and the enemy does not fear the Lord. The, the enemy wants to stand in the way of those who do. I want you to remember that verse we just read in Proverbs 1. Fools, fools despise wisdom 
and they despise instruction. And so let me just be blunt here. When you choose to live out your life in fear of God, you're going to bump into some people who by the biblical definition just given are fools. They're fools. And, and I'm not being cute with this phrase. You might be married to one. You might work for one. You might be the daughter of one. You, you might just live in a society full of them. And that's not to degrade that person. It's just simply to say that from this, this definition in Proverbs 1-7, they, they despise wisdom and instruction. And so what you do as you live out your faith might scare them and might intimidate them. And their, their reaction to that is to reject or to mock or, or, or to just try to demean. But I want to remind you that you're not seeking their approval. Now, you want to live your life so that they find your faith attractive, so that they can come and, and know Jesus for themselves. But, but I want you to take heart in knowing that the one who is in you is greater than anyone who would stand in your way. And so the women watching this here this morning, we are in desperate need of women who fear the Lord. So put Him first in your life. Be amazed by His love and live out that call each and every day. Now to men and to children. I have three challenges for you this morning. The first is to praise the wisdom that comes from the women in your life. Highlight Lift up the times that in your life that, that, that women have provided you wisdom. Listen to their guidance and listen to, to their passion. Listen to, to what they feel like God is calling them and what that God is calling maybe even you to do along with them. Honor the good advice that you get from them. Do not, do not be intimidated by it, but, but embrace God working through those women who are in your life. We, we need to make a point of highlighting women in our lives who are, who are women who, who listen to what God says, who fear God, and who do what God calls them to do. Honor her for all her hands have done, and let her work bring her praise at the city gates. And so, we don't really have city gates anymore, but we do have an internet. And so today, we're going to just take some time for some of our folks to, to praise the women in their life for being wise, for being women who fear the Lord. My mom is special because I love her hand and when mommy the play lightsabers with us. And I need to help her clean up porch. Nate, why is mommy special? Or Nora, why is mommy special? Because I love her. She's special. Can you look at the camera? She, you love her because she's special? Mm-hmm. Okay. My mom is special because she's there for me and my family through good times and bad. I'm special because I love her. Brandy, why is your mommy special? My mom is special because she checks me in at night. My mother is special because she gets us candy. She does our laundry. She is kind and nice and cares for others. She helps me with my homework and she also helps me undo my hair. At night, she comes up and talks and prays with us. Mom is special because she helps me with everything. My mom is special because she's so sweet. Hi. And prays me. My granny is special because she prays with me. My nana is special. special because 
love you so much. My mom is special because she is always there for us. She is competitive and she wants us to have fun and she always tries to make us feel good. And that is why I love her the most. My mom is special because she loves me so much. Happy Nervous Day! Our mom is special because she is always going above and beyond for us and our family. We love you, Mom! My mom is special because she is a great cooker and I like her food. Mom is special because she is compassionate towards others um, and she always understands our feelings and she is always right by my side and that's why I love her. My mom is special because she's always been there for me. She's awesome and she makes the best food in the world. My mom is special because she speaks with me. My gramps is special because she tells me stories every night. My Nana is special because she plays with me. My mom is special because she's always there and caring and providing a lot of love to all of her kids, their spouses, and all of her grandkids. We love you, Mom. Happy, Happy Mother's, Mother's Day. Day. My mom is special because she takes care of me and helps me with things when they get hard. My mom is special because not only did she give birth to a legend, but uh, the a lot of support and the caringness I had growing up to let me go to sporting events, to pay for everything I needed, only coming with shoes, clothes, and school supplies. Uh, and then the support, showing up at sporting events, like never missing a game and all that stuff, never missing a track meet, uh, just giving giving me so much growing up, putting food on the table, giving me a roof to live under. Just great to support, even to look down at my phone, living 500 miles away and getting a call from me, Madre, just to check in on me and see how I'm doing. It's, it's amazing to still have a mom that cares about you like that. So yeah, even from 500 miles away, my mom's still the greatest mom around. So I appreciate it a lot. So make sure you take time to praise the character of the women in your life, your women in your life who, who fear the Lord. Highlight them. Celebrate them. The second thing is to, in your life, celebrate the fear of the Lord. You see, it's a hypocritical message for us to praise the women in our life like we just did and then live a life that emphasizes the lifestyles that are contrary to what the Bible calls us to live. It's, it's hypocritical for us to, to say that we want a wife who fears the Lord, but then we find satisfaction or, or pleasure or fulfillment in women who don't by images on a screen or emotional relationships at a workplace. See, it's really important for us to be consistent. We need to celebrate the fear of the Lord in our life. We need to highlight those, those things in our life that, that do what they're supposed to do, those people who live out their faith in, in a real way. We need to be consistent. We don't need to send mixed signals. And we need to live for God as well. We need to not just say, well, she's doing a great job, so that means I don't have to. No, no, we together strive to fear the Lord. And so celebrate that in your life. The third thing is this. Men and children, pray for the women in your life and encourage them in their journeys as you give grace. Here's what we've asked women to do today. Here's what the Bible asks actually all of us to do today. We've asked them to live for God in a world that doesn't care for God. We've asked them to fear the Lord in a world that competes for their attention and their loyalty. We, we've asked them to be all of these characteristics in a world that values none of them. 
And we have strong women in our life. And they have the Spirit inside of them. But they don't have to do it by themselves. Make sure that you are praying for the women in your life. Make sure that you are going out of your way to encourage them as they seek to be who God's calling them to be. And then along the way, in weak moments where missteps happen, make sure that you are the one who gives grace and picks them up instead of lashing out on judgment and kicking them while they're down. Make sure that you are an ally and a brother in Christ to those who are seeking to live a life that fears the Lord. And so today, today we celebrate Mother's Day. Today we highlight those women in our life who have, who have, who have feared the Lord and who have impressed that upon us. We, we challenge those, all women, to be that, to, to be that person in the lives of, of those who are around them. And we also realize that everyone has a part to play as we pray for and encourage each other. As I've said throughout this sermon, even though we've addressed women, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom for all of us. It's it's how we live life the way we're supposed to. When we put God in His rightful place, we will live the life that we're called to live. And as we do every week, we invite you into this relationship with him. He's already done everything necessary. He sent his own and only son to die on the cross for our sins. And all we have to do is receive that gift that he's freely given to us. There's a number on the screen here, a number that you can call or text. And one of our staff members, either Heath or myself, will will answer that. And we encourage you to, to take that next step in your faith. Listen, you'll never live the life that God's calling you to live, what you were created to do without Jesus and without him being first in your life. And so please call, please text. We'd love to, to talk to you about that, and we would love to set up a time for you to meet us here at this church and, and to be baptized. We promise we'll do it in the safe, uh, safe manner uh, with everything going on. So today, women, but also men, children, fear the Lord. Put Him first and live for Him. Happy Mother's Day.